Welcome to Daily Watch Live number 108. Welcome, Christian. How are you? Thank you very much, Nick. I'm very fine. Thank you. How are you? I am so fine. Excellent. So fine is good. This morning I uh, I uh, did a post about the new uh, Honey Gold. Yes, you work. did. Yes, you did. Lumen, actually three components that are very much longer. Uh, one component was until this day a bit unclear to me because I couldn't match the Lumen dials with the Lange DNA. That was my problem. I, I couldn't get really used to the, the, the previous Lumen editions mm -hmm. for some reasons. Uh, that's also for because for me personally, the bar with Lange is very high. But now they nailed it. I think with the tight work, the balance is so perfect that uh, I haven't seen it in real. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a, bit, a bit of a disclaimer, but I really, really love that watch. It's a good looking watch and honey gold is another element that is very long. Yeah. And side work, of course. Yeah. So um, did you, you, you were probably one of the last people to post the side work, honey gold lumen. I think, yeah, I, I, I liked uh, approximately 40,000 posts on, on the, on the watch. So I, I must have been one of the very last, but did you follow the arguments about the availability? No, oh, I try to avoid that, but it's probably there because the watch will probably be sold out. Oh, it's I, gone. I even know, it's don't gone. know what the edition is. It, is it limited? Or probably is it 100 pieces. 100 pieces. Like that. Like, Usually yeah, it's yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I didn't research on it. I got the press release, but I, I didn't have time to actually look through it. Yeah. Uh, I just read the headlines. Uh, and um, I think that, that Lange is now moving into a Patek territory. The un unavailability, the unobtainium materials etc etc uh, Lang is really enjoying a uh, fantastic momentum it these is. couple of years it is yeah and, and of course it's deserved. very limited it, it's only like you know during the crisis it was less than four thousand I think it was actually around three thousand five hundred uh, pieces that came out during covid uh, and now that I think that they're coming back slowly to to normal production which is around four thousand five hundred. Well, I mind actually, you that that's that's approximately eight percent of the Patek annual production. Sure. So sure, absolutely. And and uh, uh, the the funny thing is, if if you ask me if the quality is better at uh, Lange than Patek, I don't know. But I think they decorate their way into being better. It's all about decoration at Lange. It's yeah, and I think what Lange. In, in, in retrospect and also a bit uh, over the longer period because they exist, uh, the, 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 the modern contemporary Lange ex is existing for, what is it, 25 years? 26? Well, it was, I think, uh, Gunther Blumlein and uh, Walter Lange himself, uh, they started the company in 1990. You know what date? No. October 25? No. That wasn't that the date that they no, launched No, 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 that was 1994. Yeah, 1994, but October 25, 1994, isn't it? I think the, the, the reason why you think about October 25 is because the, the, first, uh, the first models were introduced on October the 25th. And Gunther Blumlein knew that the newspapers would publish pictures the day after. Yeah. So that's why it says 25 yeah. in the date windows. Yeah. I don't know, however, if it was actually, re if the company was started on October 25th, 1990. Ah, I don't know that either. I, now I'm referring to the big event with the, with the pillars, with the four. That uh, was October 24th. Uh, with, the, with the launch product. Yes, yes. That was, and actually yesterday it was October 25th as well. So it's, it's a nice bridge. Uh, I think Lange, in retrospect, they benefit of the, and that's, I think that's the important role of Gunther Blumlein, mm. the quality feel of a Lange. Everything fits, the, the golden, standard in terms of the, the looks of the Lange One, especially, which is still my hero product. And I think of me, for many people, that is the archetype Lange. Yeah. Uh, the gold I, ratio, you mean? Uh, the, the golden ratio, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that reflects on, on the product ever since. So every time I see a Lange, without seeing it in the flesh, mm -hmm. just seeing it on a picture, mm -hmm. you feel the quality, even more than with a Patek. And that is something in your in your mind that's yeah but also we we haven't seen <clears throat> a crazy evolution in terms of lange of course the movements have you know that they, they have evolved they've become better yeah if you look at that side track, for instance yeah. now it has an instant jump before that you could see like five seconds before the, the the disc would move a little bit and then once it turned after 12 it would jump so now it's instantaneously uh, changing so that's 
that's a, a um, you know development of the Zeitwerk movement. Yeah, it they twerk it a little better every yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Constant we have evolution. we have. Yeah. I mean, since the Stern family took over uh, uh, Patek in 1932, two, yeah, um, we've seen evolutions of movements and models, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Lange is still Lange one. That's it. Yeah. So you have Lange one, you have time zone, Lange one time zone, you have the Lange one to Ryong, you have the Lange one perpetual calendar, and you have the Zeitwerk. It's completely different. When it came out in 2009, I was like, it doesn't even look like a Lange. I don't like it. I don't like it. But then it grows on you, and you understand why it looks like that, and you turn it around, and you just jump into this ocean of wonderful micro mechanics that only Lange understand how to decorate and how to go, make you go you don't Ooh, even say anything be, yeah even people who do not understand or even love horology they go like wow so, this watch is something else yeah and the, and, and the, i don't think you have people doing that with a patek they will go like oh, wow a patek so you have the, the 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 brand name that that makes you go oh wow a yeah, patek yeah. but you have to turn a, a lange around to go wow what a movement yeah. incredible yeah and uh, having said that it's still too long that they that they got the recognition that they're getting now uh with all the side effects as being waiting lists and no availability unobtainium sure. as you call it yeah uh yeah we have to deal with that but still uh, uh again the sidewalk lumen uh honey gold yeah have a look if you haven't seen it yet have a look at that watch it's 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 splendid it's great i believe the honey gold alloy actually is exclusively limited editions from Lange. Yeah. 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 They, they only do limited editions. So that could be a, um, a Lumen, but not necessarily. They have other had other editions. I think they started seven, eight years ago with uh, with Honey Gold. Probably did. Something like that. So you have German Silver and Honey Gold. Honey Gold. Okay. That was Lange. Um, okay, now, can I just say something really weird? Yeah. I knew you, oh, yeah because you, you, you placed do. a winder. <laughs> I you think placed a winder here. I think it was our prop manager who did that. Our it's, prop manager. It was not me, but it was. Uh, we have a full team sitting here. So this is not talking Patek Philippe. This is not a Patek Philippe reference 1463 vintage chronograph at all. This is a watch that we discussed several weeks ago. Yes. And when we did, the week after we published it on, on, on YouTube, we got quite some craze and, and, and discussion on the brand. And on their position and and what we're talking about fool and murray by the way this is the mr gray edition oh, yeah the watch from a brand that is actually uh, uh causing quite some commotion these days and it's i think that's only fair because we we uh, have seen the shortlist for the gphg uh the um, the watch show uh which uh this year is uh, and i think last year as well was, was quite strange because there's like 400 members of the jury it's uh, actually, if you don't know, it's the Oscar for watch brands. In several categories, you can choose your favorite watch, or at yeah. least the jury members can. And on November 4, there is an, an event uh, where the winners are selected with a lot of praise, with yeah. a beautiful statue, and with the bragging rights for the rest of the year that you can claim. I'm the winner in this category. And there are yeah, sure. great watches out there. Uh, only a week ago, we had a, a live session with uh, Louis Manet, with a beautiful space revolution, a watch that is 370,000 euros. Um, it is nominated in the tourbillon category. But now on the other end of the specter, and yeah. this is something that's basically, I think it's new for GPHG to have brands like Furlan, Mar uh, Marley. Mari. Mari. Well, the, the, the thing is, uh, I like the watch. I bought this for $350 uh, because it was a Kickstarter campaign. And I was... I was amazed about the communication and uh, I think the communication skills around the creation of Furlimari is what sells the watch. Because the weird thing is $350 uh, and right now they're being uh, offered on the secondary market for between two and $3,000. And the reason why I was arguing that this should not be in a winder is because it's mecha quartz. So you can't even wind it, the winder. It's not even automatic. It's not even mechanical. Uh, but 
when you see a market that responds uh, with such a, a, a premium uh, secondary price, I, I must ask myself, it, it it can't be the quality because if you can sell it for three hundred fifty dollars and they still make money, it's not the quality that drives the watch. Uh, or you could argue that any other watch that costs more than three hundred fifty dollars is too damn expensive. Uh, but it does look precisely like a 1463 Patek Philippe, which kind of makes it a replica. It makes it a replica. And now we are getting to the point what, what caused the commotion and the discussion a few weeks ago. We get comments from people saying mm. it is a replica. Fair mm. enough. Yeah. And it's a good value and they're popular. But why should this be nominated for GPHG? What the is category, it that- though, is challenging. The, the, the challenger... Uh, you have Doxa there, and you have some other. But it's weird that Doxa is in the Challenger brand with the with the uh, with the two hundred, uh, because that that Doxa is not a new brand. No, but the challenging part is more like the price. If I look at it, it's it's watches below three point five thousand uh, Swiss francs, mm-hmm. right? Is that the only criteria? Because then Doxa obviously fits in. If you look at the list of the of the challenges, uh, those are. Uh, uh, I just ran through them uh, really fast. I believe that's five or six brands. And the most established brand there is Doxa. The other ones are very new, very, very young, uh, very recent uh, launches. So I think it's also uh, in terms of challenging, uh, okay, they're challenging the market with a fantastic new dial or, uh, you know, to be young, less than 3,000 euros, which we were also experiencing these days, uh, that yeah. we have great Swiss companies coming out with two billion watches. Uh, but I am actually really surprised to see a replica, wonderfully made, absolutely. The dial is, is even praised by John Goldberger himself, um, to see a replica being nominated. And I think that a lot of people and a lot of the response we got to, uh, to our podcast when we discussed this watch were very reasonable. Why are you talking about a replica? I thought you were a serious show. Yeah, well, why is GPHG uh, nominating a replica? I thought it was a serious show. That's a serious event. But we have 400 members of the jury. And the voices of the 400 members of the jury have been heard. It is something we came up with. I didn't decide what the secondary market should look like after the Kickstarter campaign started to... Uh, to deliver the watches. Okay, but let's let's try. Let's not be narrow-minded. Let's be open-minded. Sure. Uh, um, it's fair that their success. And if we look at it, and we look at the price, and especially I hear you saying as well many times when we discuss this brand, it's brilliant marketing. Yeah. It's good communication. Yeah. Um, that's fair enough. But that's not the same as a beautiful dial of uh, of of uh, um, an innovative tourbillon. That is something on a watch. This is something on the way community gate. I, I can challenge you that uh, Daniel Wellington also did uh, uh, great marketing communication. So Nick what, said Daniel Wellington. I, I said, thought you refused to ever talk about Daniel Wellington. No, but it, it, as as a phenomena, I understand what they did. They 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 took advantage of a new era in communicating and marketing and branding watches. And basically, they are doing the same. It's Kickstarter. They have new sure. ways to attract people. They do yes. a, a good, decent product. Yep. Um, actually, I haven't expressed my own opinion yet, whether I should think it should be on GPHG or not. Because I do think... It should actually. I think it. It. We all know this is not. This will not be chosen for the for the uh, watchmaking technology no. or for the watchmaking skills. It no. is chosen for another reason. I think we should challenge GPHG and call that category marketing instead or communication skills. What if we had? What if the 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 award shows they actually had that category where they nominate the best communication of a wristwatch? Yeah, I think that that IWC would be uh, would be nominated in that as well with Chris communicating from black containers around the world, also during Watches and Wonders. That's also great communication skills when you can't have a booth at uh, SHH or, or Watches and Wonders or um, Basel World. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, when you can't have that, how do you communicate your wonderful new watches? And I think Fuller Maori is a great example of modern thinking of a classic watch design at a very low price, 
started a Kickstarter. Yeah. I think we're going to get hefty discussions today as well on a, on a podcast. Of and, course. And rightfully so. Please express your opinion as well, because it's not a matter of right or wrong. And you could have a different opinion on, on whether this should or should not be nominated. Um, I think it's part of, let's put it like this, it's part of the watch industry mm. as much as uh, a Patek is. Yeah, well, Patek, of course, is not even partaking. No, 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 not, not they don't case. do award shows. <laughs> no, they, they are an award themselves. And uh, but it's it, that's also the structure of GPHG is that you have to actively push yourself to to be nominated, right? Of so course, of course, it is. It is yeah, also yeah. also this is a type of marketing uh, that is used by many brands to 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 get further in the ranks and to get more attractive for watch fans. So what if this actually had a mechanical chronograph movement inside and somebody printed Patek Philippe, how would you react? Uh, react? Then it would say it was a fake watch, right? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So this is a replica. Yeah, but no, I, have, I have, haven't read the memo that Patek has a claim on vintage looking chronograph watches. Not at so all. And is. mind you, Fala Mari has not communicated that this looks like a 1463. No. He basically, he, he, he just communicates that this is honoring the 50s and 60s look of a chronograph. And then you get easily with Patek, of course. So it is, in my opinion, it, but I think that we're now entering a discussion that is never ending and that is fully opinionated by many of you and us. That is the difference between being an homage, being a replica, mm. and being a full ripoff. And that is a very gray er area, to be honest. Uh, we have to acknowledge that. That is an of area that, that is uh, some... And, and, and when some brand or some watch is getting from, uh, um, uh, from an homage to a replica, that is basically personal taste. I guess. It is very personal taste. I like the watch. I have not worn it a lot, but I bought it because I liked the way it looked. I thought it was a it was a great initiative, and of course, three hundred fifty dollars. You can't really lose anything there, right? Yeah. So uh, you know, even the wrapping, you know, it comes to this little this little leathery looking vintage kind of box. And, you know, with a document that actually looks like a, a document from the archives of Patek Philippe. Yeah. Even the writing and everything is, is, is uh, you know, the chapters of it. It's, he, he really nailed everything that happened back then and that is happening now. It is not, however, the only watch that looks like a, a vintage uh, chronograph uh, with a diameter of 38 millimeters uh, or 37. This one is... Um, we mentioned this other brand. What was that? Um, this other uh, that looks like uh, uh, we think they're actually using the same mechanical. Uh, Monsieur, no. Um. Monsieur, we mentioned already. Now it's uh, I think with a G. I, I gave you one of the watches. Koniche. Koniche. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Koniche. That's what Alex told me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Koniche. Yeah. yeah. I think Koniche actually they they kind of initiated this trend of honoring uh, chronograph watches looks of the 40s and 50s. And, you know, they're, they're communicated from Monaco all the time. When you see the Instagram account, uh, you know, it says Monaco or, you know, uh, Saint-Tropez. So they really wanted to be part of that uh, high-end, um, great living environment that goes on in Monaco and Saint-Tropez. So their communication is around, oh, the watch, you know, has it live, its life in, in, in Monaco and Saint-Tropez. Uh, whereas uh, for Lamari, they communicate in, um, well, we just really love the design and I believe they actually have relations to uh, to the Frédéric Piguet uh, Mecca Quartz that was made uh, many years ago that was used by Chez de Culture, for instance. And IWC. And IWC. Right? Yeah. IWC uh, used it for the, the pilots, uh, 36 millimeter. 3741. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Rain Man I used on the man. show. Yeah. <laughs> Counting Sorry. cards. Uh, which is a great watch, by yeah. the way. Uh, it, it, there's not a lot of love for for Mecha Quartz uh, chronograph movement, which is fair. I mean, this one also has a 24-hour indicator, which is a great complication. I but think not, not something you would actually find on the original 1463. Pro tip comes to mind right now. If you're looking for a nice collector watch, 
the 90s uh, Indian Your IWC, 36 that millimeter, that too. mega quartz. Yeah. It is nothing like what is the Indian Your today because no. it's a bit, it lost a bit its attractiveness, to be honest. Yeah. But back then, it was a cool watch. It was a cool watch. And I think actually it's 34 millimeters. It's amazing. It's, it's a tiny, tiny watch today, uh, as was the 3741. Is, I think it's only 36 millimeters. Yeah, 36. Yeah. Actually, they also did it with a perpetual. I have to yeah. apologize. Because? Last year, we promised we were going to talk about luxury divers watches. And yeah, we were sure. supposed to talk about sure. luxury divers watches today as well. But time just ran out. Yeah, I'm sorry. But we did uh, uh, things that, that uh, popped up in our minds. Yes. And that are important to discuss with yes. you, uh, with you uh, fellow geeks. Yeah. So hope you don't mind. And we will definitely get to the luxury diver watches. So that was the Zeitwerk, Honey Someday. Gold, Lumen. It was the Full and Mari and other great brands that uh, came up with the honoring the 40s and 50s chronographs movement, the Monsha and the Kanish. Let us hear your voice. Yeah, let's hear what topics. you think. Is, is this a replica? Uh, and what about Kanish? What about Monsha? Is it honoring great designs? Is it basically just ripping off other brands? Or how do you feel about it? Would you spend 300 or $700 uh, on a Mecha Quartz uh, watch that looks like something from the 50s? Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. <laughs>